from Singapore, we have Professor David Lee, um, and he uh, he uh, of the BBA and associate editor of the journal of the British Boxing Association, uh, and a good friend to all of us. Uh, so, David, if you could uh, if you could begin your presentation, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, can loud and clear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's great. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nassim and uh, members of the British Blockchain Association. Uh, I'm honoured to be here today to speak to you in the metaverse about the challenges and opportunities for crypto mass adoption in the digital economy, especially on the efforts of Singapore. Now, the Bitcoin emergence of 2009 timely it was introduced during the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, a period marked by widespread skepticism towards the traditional banking system. The crisis exposed the vulnerabilities of the fractional reserve system, where banks only hold a fraction of their depositors' money in reserve, lending out the rest. This system can lead to liquidity crisis if any depositors demand their money back all at the same time. So Bitcoin's um, transparent peer-to-peer -peer nature recorded on the public blockchain offer an alternative to a distrusted banking paradigm with its fixed supply and independence from central banks, Bitcoin provided a timely solution, gaining traction as a more secure commerce financial option. There's no doubt that governments and regulators today are aware of the functions of Bitcoin and they respect the technology and community behind the currency. However, in my opinion, the crypto space has been a shift in its demographic. The political and economic implications of decentralized currencies uh, drove earlier enthusiasts. Today, many newcomers are primarily attracted to its technological and financial aspects. Uh, key opinion leaders in the industry, once champions of decentralization and autonomy, now often align with the financial system, even advocating for regulations if it means broader acceptance and mass adoption. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm just describing you know, what is happening since 2008. And the journey towards mass adoption of cryptocurrencies is fraught with challenges. As the industry grows, so does the cost of compliance with regulatory standards. This raises a pertinent question. Is widespread adoption feasible given this escalating cost? Moreover, there's a noticeable shift in attitude with many now dismissing innovative ideas uh, centered around privacy protection. Zero Knowledge Proof has gained prominence and thanks to the pioneers who funded projects like Zcash, these projects have played a crucial role in educating regulators about the technology. A notable instance was in July 2016 when the founder of Zcash, Zuko Wilcox, conducted a Zero Knowledge Proof course at the Singapore University of social sciences. This led to the project moving to by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which emphasized the privacy protection aspect of central bank digital currencies. Now, CBDCs are digital versions of a country national currency issued and regulated by central banks. Its value will be much more stable than stable coins as the country backs the crypto. The crypto industry value is intrinsically linked to its technology, especially, especially aspects that are challenging for regulators to control. If a cryptocurrency can be easily regulated, its inherent value might diminish. This is because its appeal lies in its decentralized and autonomous nature. Impossible to regulate crypto technology is a major determinant of the value and contribution of the industry in the virtual economy. Embracing regulation is a two-sided sword. The easier to regulate, the easier is the virtual economy being controlled by a malicious element. That will be disastrous for a benevolent government, especially if it promotes CBDC and stable coin. The crypto community must remain vigilant against illicit activities like money laundering, human trafficking, drug dealing, terrorist financing, gambling, and pornography. However, it is essential to strike a balance. I want to be a little bit more controversial here 
to draw attention to how crypto and blockchain community can retain its relevance. Technologies like Tornado Cash, which enhances privacy, should be evaluated for their potential benefits, not just the possible harm they might cause. This, dismissing such technologies outright will hinder the growth and value proposition of Web3. As we march towards a digital economy, the importance of data security and privacy cannot be overstated. These are not just technological requirements, but are fundamental to preserving human dignity. The tools and technologies underpinning the digital economy should prioritize these values. Data security and privacy protection should never be compromised if we were to promote the digital economy. The underlying tech is key to human dignity preserving tools. Let us hope we don't promote the digital economy at the expense of human dignity. The geopolitics of cryptocurrency is multifaceted, with nations taking different approaches based on their economic, political, and strategic interests. As the crypto landscape evolves, it will undoubtedly play a significant role in shaping global power dynamics, trade relationships, and financial system. As builders, it is essential to consider not only technology, but also politics and economics. For instance, while the tech may be virtual, the developers that do not disappear or diminish themselves, like Satoshi Nakamoto, are subject to physical constraints. They will have to avoid expanding in crypto hostile regions, cut costs during bear markets, and ensure their base is politically stable. Otherwise, the project may be suspended due to unexpected issues. Large countries may or may not be friendly to cryptocurrencies, stable coins, but that's exactly what small countries need. Crypto stable coins can grow big by meeting the needs of small countries with uh, ideas like de dollarization or de UN countries, wherever uh, they consider uh, as their objective. Knowing the geopolitics of crypto can help us to succeed in the right direction. While large nations might resist cryptocurrencies, more de dollarized or UN countries can benefit immensely from them. Understanding these geopolitical nuances can guide crypto ventures effectively. Regulatory arbitrage, leveraging leg regulatory differences across jurisdictions, is a short lived strategy in the crypto realm. As crypto gains traction, global bodies push for standardized regulations, narrowing the scope for such arbitrage. International bodies such as the G20, and the International Monetary Fund are working to create standardi standardized regulatory frameworks. Cryptocurrency regulations are ever-changing. A crypto-friendly nation today might adopt stricter rules tomorrow. Operating in lax regulatory environments can harm a company's reputation. Moreover, constantly relocating to exploit regulatory differences is log logistically challenging and can disrupt business. For sustainable growth, Operating in clear regulatory environments and collaborating with regulators is advisable. Adhering to robust regulations can also foster consumer trust, vital for long term crypto. Singapore is an open economy and has been friendly to Web3 with relatively stable and sustainable policies. Singapore wants to be an important node of Web3. The Monetary Authority of Singapore serves as Singapore's central bank to promote sustainable economic growth and advance a stable financial system. The KPIs MES manages to achieve includes promoting sustainable economic growth and jobs, maintaining a strong, durable, and trustworthy financial center while cultivating an inventive and diverse financial system. Compared to Hong Kong interest in developing retail um, investors, Singapore focuses more on institution-type business activities. Now, the MES welcomes the industry initiative for responsible digital asset innovation and encourages interested parties to submit a proposal to the FinTech Regulatory Sandbox for practical testing. This allowed Web3 startups and projects to test their solutions in real-world scenarios without immediately facing full regulatory requirements. The MES is responsible for regulation and has a development function. It has done a good job in balancing regulation and development, adopt, adopting the right level of regulation for different product development cycles. 
with schemes such as financial sector develop, financial sector technology and innovation scheme, where MES committed to 150 million for technology and innovation. Singapore is providing financial support for projects that can shape the future of Web3. We will hear a lot more about the new collaboration between government and industry during the Singapore FinTech Festival in November. And I invite everyone to come to Singapore during that period. Singapore focus on education produces a skilled workforce, making it a hotspot for Web3 talent. Singapore University of Social Sciences, NUS, NTU, SMU, Global FinTech Institute, which is sponsored by the MES as well, and other universities in Singapore offer courses specifically for Web3, its global connectivity and status at the financial hub, further enhance its appeal. The last but last but not least, Singapore's strategic location and status as a global financial hub make it an ideal place for Web3 companies to connect with global partners investors and markets. That's the reason why token 205, uh, 2049 was held in Singapore last week. However, Singapore's welcoming stance on crypto assets should not be mistaken for leniency. Cryptocurrency service providers in Singapore are, are not allowed to advertise their services to public, but are only permitted to promote their activities on social media. Despite this, Singapore remains competitive in the market the regulator, through its many conferences around the world, collaborates with industry and promotes Web3 projects to different countries for social impact. Ironically, the real demand of Web3 comes from governments in global identity, trade, cross-border payments, sustainability, digital assets. It is no surprise that stable coins for G10 is the focus for Singapore after implementing the new regulatory framework. There are many government projects with private sectors, such as Project Ubin, Project Pocket, Project Nexus, Project Guardian, Project Greenpeace, and many, many others, and it's still continuing. The intersection of ethics and legality is a complex issue, particularly in fields like cryptocurrency and technology. It is true that having ethical design may not always align with legal requirements, and conversely, adhering strictly to the law may not always be ethically sound. This conundrum is not unique to crypto. It is a broader challenge in the tech and AI fields as well. Collaboration with regulators and government is crucial for the crypto community. Instead of solely focusing on bending to regulatory demands, working together on equal footing can help create a balanced and fair regulatory framework. This approach can prevent excessive regulation that stifles innovation or ensuring that ethical concerns are addressed. The crypto industry should avoid a profits at all costs mentality, and this can lead to ethical dilemmas and regulatory backlash. Finding a balance between innovation, compliance, and ethics is essential. It is important to reference established ethical guidelines and codes of conduct, as well as engage in ongoing dialogues with regulators and experts in the field navigate these complexities. And I think British Blockchain Association is one of the best organizations in the best position to do. In summary, the crypto community should prioritize ethical consideration alongside legal compliance. Collaborative efforts with regulators combined with the commitment to innovation and ethics in mind will be key to achieving mass adoption and ensuring the industry's long-term sustainability. In conclusion, Singapore's robust regulatory framework makes it a prime destination for crypto innovators. I invite you to Singapore for our JBBA conference next year and to collaborate, innovate, and contribute to the global blockchain landscape. Let's leverage Singapore's and BBA's strength, foster innovation, and make a lasting impact. Thank you for your time. Thanks, David. Fascinating. Um, we're, we're, we're running uh, delightfully early, so do, does anyone have a question, um, David? If anyone has any questions, you can post in the chat box. <clears throat> David, I have one quick question. Um, you mentioned about the anonymity of uh, Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamoto, and how important it is in the context of uh, um, crypto um, innovation and how things started. 
um do you think that um if uh, we knew his identity then the crypto landscape would have been different today i think that's certainly the case and uh, diminishing oneself uh, in order for the spirit of uh, you know i call it web tree to grow is key to what we should we should do and i think what is happening now in the industry is that a lot of uh, you know different communities are building their own cult following and mm. it's not in my sense that I, I, i've been involved in the industry from 2013 i just feel that the, the direction is a little bit misguided uh, in the wrong in, in developing in the wrong area to be exclusive and being inclusive is one uh, key elements for mass adoption and also acceptance by regulators but having said that i think the, the um the main concern for for singapore regulators are, are two for one is privacy protection uh, that's one and also i think the other one is actually sustainability because to develop the digital economy we have to really look at uh, uh when we talk about web3 we, we really look, need to look at renewable energy uh that's one area that we need, we need to be very uh focused on i think singapore is working a lot of sustainability and especially in the in the blockchain space uh you know to use blockchain to register carbon emission uh to prevent greenwashing from carbon credit products and and so on so project green print is a very good start and i think we will hear a lot more about that and then the, and the other reason why privacy is important is also because uh in the web3 ai become extremely important and the power of computing power uh, the computing um power itself is going to overwhelm uh human and to retain human dignity i think uh, what satoshi is doing to diminish oneself and have privacy protection is is key to uh mass adoption for web3 in a sustainable way thank you david excellent yeah thank, thank you for you, having yeah. me